Welcome to PRS Podcast. I'm Mike. And this is Orlando. And this is another Monday mini sode. Yeah. And this this episode, we're going to be taking you higher in the profits because we're talking about when you should be listing high. Okay. And and again, everybody has their own model that works for them, but this is why we list high. And and some of these Mike and I might disagree on a little bit. Uh, but first of all, this is an easy one. It's scarcity, right? It's it's how much in supply is there of an item. So if there is an item that you're selling and there's only like two other people that are selling the same item and there's a lot of sell through, right? Meaning that there's way more sold listings and there are listings that haven't sold, then chances are if you list higher, you're probably going to get that money for now. If it's something obnoxious, like, you know, you 3x the price of what other people, then maybe it might not happen. But if if you're the lone one, then you can list for whatever you want, right? Yeah. You can kind of let the market test. But the itself. market, yeah, let the market figure that out. Yeah, so yeah, you let the market figure it out because I mean, people often talk about doing, um, especially if you have no idea the value of an item. Sometimes, depending on the item, and that's not what this episode is, but it might be worth doing auction if it's a really high end item and you don't know, and we'll see. Uh, but if you're like the a, a one off on like, you know, like what, uh, an example Orlando gave early on in one of our episodes was a. Uh, uh, a Lion King stuffed animal. And if you're like the only one that has one currently listed, you can list pretty high because if you've got no competition and somebody wants it, they're going to, they're going to have to settle with you. And and if we, you've got best offer on, you know, you're still going to be able to do well. It's like, it's like the uh, never split the difference. If you give a high number as your anchor point, you know, you're like, man, I, I, I bought this for $5. I'd love to be able to sell it for 50. I'm listing it for 200, you know, because mm-hmm. then if somebody talks you down to a hundred, they thought they've got a great deal. So um, you can't do that if everybody else hasn't listed for 25. So you, you've got to be wise with your listings like that. Now, what we're not saying will work, but who knows? Maybe it will. Maybe we should try this sometime. But uh, oh, now they, we're sharing this before we're trying it out. You should you should be um, selling it. I mean, we did mention this, not just that you're the only one of that you can list that high or a few. There's only a few other competitors on there, which they're probably also listing high. But there, like Orlando said, there's got to be some kind of a sell through. You should be able to track to see that this has sold in the past for semi close to what you're trying to sell it for, um, that there's value there. Because, I mean, you can go to, um, I don't know, the Dollar Tree and find some random salt shaker that's like a piece of junk salt shaker and nobody's selling them on eBay. And you can't be like, well, I'm the only one with this listing. So I'm listing <laughs> it for a hundred bucks. Yeah. But I don't know. Maybe that would work if, if you know, people you almost can create. And that's one of the reasons we do list high is it creates a sense of urgency or value. People have perceived value in items that are listed higher. And we've even experienced that ourselves where we have something listed a little bit higher than other people and they choose us, right? Because they're like, oh, well, if that one's 20 and you know, somebody else is 15.99, I bet that $20 one is nicer. Some people think that way, not everybody. In fact, probably fewer people think that way on a regular basis, but there's enough people that have that perceived value of, well, I want the nicer one. So I'm going to get that one, especially if it's used items, right? You, You they're going to think, well, the higher value one must be the one that's in the better condition, even if they're in the same condition. Yeah, but always, I would say, make sure you go through sell through rate. The chances of you finding a dollar, actually, it's not a dollar anymore, dollar twenty five, yeah, dollar twenty salt shaker and selling for a hundred, pretty slim, unless there's some sell through on that one. Yep. yep. So, <laughs> now, your reputation matters, and so if you're someone that has a hundred percent feedback, and like, let's say you're in the thousands or even the hundreds. OK, uh, you know, you you have no negative feedback or maybe you have one or you have one neutral. Right. And the other sellers like they have no feedback or maybe they have they're in the, you know, in the single digits or in the teens or they have some bad feedback. Right. They have, you know, they have 10, 10 feedback and like three of them are negative. Right. So it's like a 66 percent, uh, you know, positive feedback. Then then you have the ability to be able to list higher. Right. Because people might go, OK, I can't get it cheaper. But man, do I really want to buy from this person? Yeah, I'm, I find myself doing that more and more. I mean, obviously, Amazon was a game changer with the reviews on items. I pretty much only buy things now that I can check. Like, what's the Amazon reviews? Hey, it's four and a half stars, but there's only 30 reviews. That doesn't tell me much. But hey, this one's got 6,000 reviews and it's four stars. And I can actually read through them and get a consensus of what people generally think about the item. And the same thing is true for individual sellers. Uh, If I'm buying something, for instance, on Etsy, if I'm buying like a miniature for a game, I'm going to look at the store's reputation even more sometimes than the item. So sometimes it'll tell you like, you know, here's the, the 
the reviews on this store, not necessarily this item. And when you start seeing review after review of great shipping, product was packed um, excellent, arrived early, um, high quality products. I'm like, all right, I'm willing to buy from this company than another company who maybe only has 10 reviews. And so and I do the same thing on eBay as well. So check your reputation, work on that. And if you've got a good reputation, you've, you've spent, you got to think about it this way. You've spent a lot of your energy, a lot of your time. You've probably had to deal with upset customers and calling eBay and all of that stuff eventually pays off for you. And I heard one time, uh, and it's valuable information is you get paid today for what you did five years ago. And I think reputation is a good example of that. Mm -hmm. When you build a reputation up, it might take a long time before you can capitalize on that. But if you've been selling for a long time and you've got a good reputation, you know, you could probably list a little bit higher, especially if you're selling multiples of something and people are going to be willing to trust you as opposed to the person maybe selling a one-off or they don't have that reputation. Yeah, so that goes along with an, uh, with the other item I had on here, the idea of repeat customers, right? So as you built that reputation, I for myself have certain niches that I've sold for over the last five years and I have, I've gotten great feedback and people have... have <laughs> the, the, they like the way I ship things, uh, you know, not only meaning how quickly I ship it, but for example, some collectibles, I go to great extents to make sure that the item arrives safely. And so people will pay sometimes for some of my items, 50 to hundred dollars more than they would for somebody else due to the fact that they've already purchased a lot from me and they've always been satisfied. Right. So customer satisfaction really 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 matters i i can't tell you how many items i've sold where it's a toy item and i've sold it for like example this last q4 i had a play mobile toy that i sold for 400 dollars more than anybody else but it's because this was a repeat buyer and so they knew that my item was legit that it was new it was sealed that i was going to overnight it to them if they wanted and so people are, are willing to pay more so Always try to develop that base. And and the way you can develop that base is even easier now with uh, eBay coupons. You can send out coupons uh, to get repeat buyers. Uh, just always, always be aware who those repeat customers are uh, because you can technically, you know, I would say consistently get more money uh, just because they're, they're not buying the item. They're buying the experience of that item from you. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that might be maybe overstating a little bit. They're buying the experience. They, they are. They like, they but like, they trust you. stuff is they safe. Trust you. Yeah. And, okay. and that's, that's trust. And again, like we said, reputation, very important. All right. Now the, this was a given a better listing. Like, what do you, what do you think I mean by that? Yeah. If you've got better pictures, you've got more description, you've got, um, unfortunately we live in the time where you've got to have item specifics, right? But if you've got all of those things, and you see that yours has those, what you're doing is you're optimizing your, your ability to be seen. You're optimizing yourself potentially in Google searches. And if I'm trying to buy an item and I see like, okay, I'm trying to buy this new you know, piece of audio equipment and there's one or two pictures on it and they're not very good and I can't really tell the conditions in. And it's like, this is in used condition, has some scuffs, uh, some minor cosmetic wear, and I can't really tell what it is. But if I've got another one where it's like I see everything and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's doable. And oh, you know what? That screen is cracked or a little bit scratched and that's going to affect my performance. So the more pictures you have, the better chance that you're going to be able to show what you have. And if the pictures have a high quality to them, right? You're not just I mean, there's nothing wrong with taking pictures on a phone. In fact, that's probably what 99 percent of us do. I do iPhone. Exactly. 8 plus. But do you have good lighting? Are you taking it from the right angles? Are you showing the things people are looking for? Um, or are you just taking a general picture? So having a better listing, having a better description, even things like having having your store's policy. Uh, part of the listing also includes when it's going to ship, what's your shipping time, uh, what are your shipping fees. All of those things are going to factor into the fact of can you charge a little bit more than somebody else? And even having faster shipping time uh, could potentially allow you to charge 5 to 10% more because somebody might need it sooner. So mm -hmm. it is what it is. Sometimes you can charge like 50% more. Yeah. So th those are extreme examples during Q4. All right. And the last one, this is, this is a ba basic one. You can always list high with best offer because the market will direct you. Right. And so, you know, sky's the limit. There's some items I can't find comps. I'll put it for a thousand dollars of best offer and the market will tell me. Yeah. I, 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 I knew Mike was going to push back. I don't on this like one. this one. So let's say, let's say you've got, I don't know, uh, a hat. You've got, you've got a camel hat. I've been selling some of those and there's 
six or seven other people on the listing or more people might show up on the listing or you got both speakers, whatever it is. And you're like, you know what? I'm listing this super high with best offer. Well, nobody's going to even think to give you an offer if there's somebody selling it for $25 with free shipping and yours is listed for a hundred with best offer. If they're thinking $25, uh, okay, I see that point. they're going to buy for $25. So yeah, you yeah. do kind of have to kind of keep an eye on what the market is. And it's hard if you've got a hundred items, 500 items, a thousand items in your store to check. Cause maybe when you listed it, there was no competition. And now maybe there's 10 people on the listing and they're all priced significantly lower than you. And you're like, I wonder why this thing isn't selling. Well, it's hard to keep track of everything and to reprice things as necessary. Uh, but I would be careful with saying, I'm going to set it super high and forget it. If you set it that high and forget it, you're probably going to have to do a little bit more uh, maintenance on that item to make sure you haven't uh, shot yourself in the foot with an item nobody's ever going to even offer on. Yeah, obviously do your research, right? Don't just do eBay research. Check other platforms. Maybe use WorthPoint if you need to. Obviously, the free tool of Terapeak on eBay that checks, you know, comps for 365. Uh, that might help you. But, you know, best offer would definitely allow you to list items higher. So anyways, hopefully you found this mini so helpful to be able to list your items higher and get more profit. And with that being said, make sure to be real, be relevant and be reselling late. Peace.